Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around video. So this week I'm joined by the new Citroen C4 Cactus. So as always, let me show you around and give you my initial thoughts on this car. Now before I, st I start, I'd like to apologize for two things. A, the condition of this car, because it is quite dirty. Um, there has been a lot of rain in the UK in uh, the last last few days. I've not had a chance to clean it. And when, when I have had a chance to clean it, it's a case of, well, is it really worth it? Because it's, it's only going to get grimy again. Uh, secondly, I'd like to apologize for any wind or background noise. I'm using a different venue to shoot this video and it is quite breezy today and there is a main road behind me. So if there's any background noise, I do apologize guys. Uh, I'm limited on time to shoot this video. So this is the uh, kind of best place I could find um, at short notice. Anyway, onto the car. Now, this is the face lifted version. And as you may see, it, it looks a little bit more sensible um, compared to its predecessor. So it, its predecessor had these massive plastic moldings on the doors uh, and they were called air bump panels. The idea was uh, if you parked this car in a car park and some idiot, some idiot next to you um, swung their door open, your car would be protected. On the facelifted version, as you can see, they are still present, but they have decreased significantly in size. The roof rails have gone as well. And if I can get to the front end without being run over, you will see the front end is a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more conservative. It's still a good looking car, don't get me wrong, but the original C4 Cactus was a, a small, funky, quirky crossover, whereas this is now a hatchback, even though it does still look a bit SUV-like. Now, this particular model is finished in deep purple, which I do really like. It's not the most masculine color, but it is a nice color. My wife likes purple, so she was quite pleased when she saw it. Now, incidentally, uh, talking about my wife, if you're expecting a Patsy Rates Cars video with this car, I'm afraid it won't arrive because she has been quite unwell recently. So um, yeah, there won't be a Patsy Rates Cars video with this car. So I do apologize guys, but she's a little bit poorly. So this is the flare model. There's only two trim levels you can choose from. You've got um, feel and flare. Previously, you had a touch feel and a flare, but for whatever reason, Citroen has only decided to give two trim levels to the facelifted version. As standard, you get 17 inch alloys. Uh, I'm not too sure whether I mentioned it, but this is the flare model. On the feel model, you get um, 16 inch alloys. And I really like their design. They're, they're really funky, they're different, they're interesting. Yep, I'm quite a fan. Now let's step inside because the wind is starting to get a little bit, um, a little bit bitter. Let me show you the inside. I quite like the interior. It's quite a nice place to be. Now the, now the new C4 Cactus has got the advanced comfort seats, which are actually making their global debut in any Citroen model. So they're really nice and spongy and marshmallowy. Now they offer um, 15 millimeters denser foam compared to the previous seats. And they also offer more comfort and more support. And let me tell you guys, they are super, super comfortable. They are like sitting in an armchair. Really, really impressive stuff. Let me step in like so. Just got to be careful not to bend my clip on mic. Ugh, because I'm pretty sure that's how my last one got damaged. Close the door like so. Yeah, I do really like the interior. Now, there are quite a few hard scratchy plastics about, but I like the styling. You've got this quite quirky top mounted glove box which is inspired by the world of travel. So it looks like it's got straps on it, which is pretty cool. Opens up like so. It's got a good amount of space in there. Now, in case you are wondering where the front passenger airbag is, it's actually, believe it or not, mounted up here, which is the first for any car. Um, the advantage of having the, the airbag up, up here is obviously, obviously you can have the glove box here and it gives your front passenger 
more legroom. So not only is it a bit quirky, but it's also quite clever. Now let me turn on the ignition like so. Now this has got a standard turnkey ignition, which does feel a little bit old school nowadays. Uh, there we are. <coughs> Excuse me. So as standard, you get a seven inch touch screen with DA DAB radio, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity, and because this is the range topic and flare model, as I mentioned earlier, you also get navigation as well. It works well enough. Let me swap pans. It's not normally this slow, maybe, there we go. So you've got DAB radio. Like I said, you've got navigation. Oh, it's, it's loading, it's thinking about it. I'll come back to um, navigation. You've also got climate control. Now, as with other uh, PSA group cars, so um, Citroen, Peugeot, DS, all of the climate controls are accessed via the touchscreen, which I'm not really a fan of because when you're driving along, it is a bit of a faff to try and make sure you hit the right button or right part of the screen. So I'm a bit old school in the fact I want like, proper physical controls for the climate control. So having it on the touch screen, I'm not a big fan of. Can we go back to navigation? Normally the touch screen is more responsive than this. I'm not too sure why, but it is being quite laggy in, in this video. But there we are, the graphics are nice enough. You've got, there we are, smartphone connectivity. Well, that's Bluetooth, obviously that's your smartphone connectivity, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And the touchscreen works well enough. Now, quite interestingly, if I bring you over here to look at the speedometer, there's no rev counter, uh, which is unusual. Uh, of course, you get a big speedo in front of you, and it's very easy to read, even when you're driving it in, in, uh, in bright sunlight. As you can see, the sun is setting to my right-hand side. It's quite a nice autumn afternoon here in the UK. Um, so yes, you get no uh, rev counter. Uh, you may be wondering what that is. That is your uh, speed sign recognition, but because I'm parked up, it it, you know, it, it obviously hasn't picked up any signs. Uh, you also get cruise control, which is accessed here. And you get buttons for the audio and for the phone functions. Now let's touch upon um, storage. So you've got a shelf here where you can put your smartphone. There we are. You've got bottle holders in the middle, but they're not the most practical. The reason why I say that is because when your drink, you know, when your bottle is full, in my experience, it may just be this particular uh, particular design of this bottle. But as soon as I drove out of the petrol garage where I, I purchased purchased this drink, I, I see it did that. So I was driving along, along the road. I turned left, and the bottle went like that and fell into my footwell, which was a little bit dangerous. Thankfully, I wasn't going too fast. However, it won't stand up. There we go. However, when the drink was kind of half full and getting towards empty, it did stay in place. But when the bottle was full, it just kept... Ah! It just kept falling out. Anyway, let's leave that alone. You've also got a good-sized door bin, although you can't get a bottle in there, not unless you like down. Oh, sorry, guys, it's a bit of rubbish chocolate bar I, I had earlier. Um, so yes, you can get a bottle in there, um, just in case you are wondering, that is a one litre bottle, but you have to lay it flat. So when you drive along, it does this, which is a little bit annoying. Glove box, I've already shown you that, that offers a decent amount of space. And last but not least, you've got this little cubby hole here. There we are, which offers a decent amount of space. You can get a packet of sweets in there or some travel stacks or whatever you may want to fit in there. It would have to be a smaller item, of course. Now, this car has a six-speed manual gearbox. Um, you can get to a six-speed automatic, but not with, uh, not with this particular engine, but I will talk about the engine in due course, of course. Um, you've also got a panoramic roof, which comes as standard. It's got a few wall droplets and you can also see a, a few GoPro marks as well where I've had things mounted. Uh, right, let me jump out and I can show you rear space, which isn't particularly good if I'm going to be honest. Let me turn off the ignition.
Now, this car hasn't got keyless entry, but of course it's got remote central locking. Uh, I believe you can opt, um, you can get, <sighs> some people, you can get um, keyless entry as an option. <laughs> See, that's one reason why I don't, I don't tend to film here anymore because you get a lot of that. Don't get me wrong, you know, I, 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 I like a bit of fun now and then, but time and a place, time and a place. Um, and plus, this isn't really a great surface for doing handbrake turns on. Anyway, I digress, I di digress, I'm starting to sound like a grumpy old man. Anyway, yes, rear space. So, as always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, so I am, of course, a tall guy. Let me uh, jump in, well, I say, well, I say jump in. Step in carefully because, oh, blimey, that wind. Because I haven't got a lot of space, so, I'm not the most flexible of people. And then close the door like so. So as you can see, I've got, well, I was I was going to say I've got no leg room. I have got leg room if I bring the camera down here. I have got leg room, but I've got no knee room. So as you can see, my knees are firmly pressed into the fabric. Headroom, I'm afraid, isn't much better either. So if I turn the camera around like so, Come on autofocus, you can do it, there we are. As you can see, I'm quite cramped back here. So if you are a taller person, you wouldn't want to sit back here. However, uh, however, for children and smaller adults, it should be absolutely fine. Could you fit three adults back here? No, I, I think it would be too much of a squeeze. Now, it's, it is worth pointing out that Citroen has improved elbow room back here. So if I show you the door cards, you will see they are kind of sculpted. So it gives you a little bit more room and you've got this nice uh, bit of fabric where you can rest your elbow, which is quite handy. You've also got quite a big door bin as well. That really is a decent size. And you've also got, this is kind of like a door handle, but you could store, store things in there as well. Nothing too big, because it's only small, but maybe a packet of chewing gum. So that's, so that's quite handy. Now this car has got a really quirky feature, much like its predecessor. Let me jump out and I can show you. Oh. Oh. Now, interestingly, bearing in mind this is a five-door hatchback, as you can see, the rear, wi the, the rear windows pop out. So check this out. How how mad is that? And they clip back in like so. Um. Yeah, it's very quirky. Now, the reason why this car has pop-up rear windows is to save weight. It, it saves 11 kilograms, which sounds all good and well, but this is already a very light car. So does it need to have pop-up rear windows? No, I think it's a bit, uh, I, I think it's a step too far. So Citroen, please give us proper rear windows. So let's come around to the boot area. Boot space is pretty decent. It's not the biggest in class, but it should be enough for everyday life. So what you are looking at, guys, is three, 358 litres, which, like I say, is pretty good. Uh, it's not quite as big as the Ford Focus or the Volkswagen Golf or the Kia Seed, but for everyday life, it should be fine. If you need more space, you can, of course, fold down the 60-40 rear seats to give you 1,170 litres. Now, the previous Cactus didn't have 60-40 rear seats. It, it simply had a flat bench. So this car is a little bit more practical because it does offer 60-40 seats as standard. Um, what I will say is there is quite a thick lip, which, see if I can show you guys. So if you've got bigger or heavier items, it may be a little bit of a faff, but overall, the boot is pretty decent. Right, let me conclude by talking about engines. Oh, I've just remembered, just seeing the little camera, which you can't see, I've just remembered this car has also got a reversing camera and rear parking sensors. Again, they come as standard. So the only optional feature on this particular car is the paintwork, the quite dirty paintwork. Right, I need to go passenger side to lift up the bonnet. So, 
So guys, there's a decent choice of engines for the new C4 Cactus. You can either have a choice of two petrol engines or two diesel engines. For the petrol, you've got a 1.2 litre three-cylinder PureTech engine, which offers either 110 horsepower or 130 horsepower. Uh, all engines are turbocharged, by the way. Or you can have a 1.5 litre diesel, which is what I've got here, uh, which produces 101 horsepower with 250 newton meters of torque. Or you can have a 1.6 litre diesel, which offers uh, 120 horsepower. Now, I mentioned gearboxes earlier. If you want to have that six speed automatic, you would need to get either the 110 horsepower PureTech petrol unit or the 120 horsepower diesel unit. Uh, this engine will hit uh, 62 miles per hour in 10 seconds and continue to a top speed of 118 miles per hour. In regards to fuel economy, uh, this engine will deliver up to 70.6 mpg on a combined run and it emits 97 grams per kilometer of CO2, meaning for the first year of a VED, you'll be required to pay 145 pounds. So it is a pretty green engine, although I know there's a lot of uncertainty about diesel and diesel's a, a bit of a dirty word at the moment. There's a lot of confusion about it, but yeah, if you're after a frugal engine, then check this one out. There will, of course, be a full review coming, so be sure to, to look out for that. If you have any questions or queries, guys, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment in the comment section below. But other than that i think it's time to finish so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you have enjoyed it if so give it a massive thumbs up if you are subscribed don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time i make a video and if you aren't subscribed guys what are you waiting for be sure to subscribe for more car obsession